Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Lenny V, and I originally come from Boston, Massachusetts, up north. And I wanted to share my story of how I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, aka MS. So back in 2019, I decided to take my mom for her 60th birthday on a cruise with some other family members, um, ready to have a good time, ready to make memories. Um, um, so essentially, it was like November time, 2019, um, late November. We get on the cruise. We're ready to have a good time, ready to have fun. I kind of know all types of trouble I'm going to get into, all types of fun, drinking, um, the you know, the usual when you get on a cruise. Um, just enjoying time away from home with family and your loved ones. Um, the first night was cool. A lot of dancing, a lot of drinking, of course. And, um, you know, that night I went to bed. Everything was good. Um, family was good. Um, but then the next morning, I remember when I woke up, you know, my toes were like tingling, kind of like when you sleep on your, uh, when your, you know, your foot falls asleep or, you know, arm falls asleep, whatever. My foot, my feet in particular, um, were tingling. Um, didn't know why. I thought it was, I know when you get on a cruise, they kind of like tuck the bed really tight um, when you get in. So I thought I was just drunk and I just kind of just hopped in a bed and I knocked out and I just, I don't know, it just probably caused it that way. But the problem was that tingling kept going on throughout the day, um, which was kind of weird. And I kind of ignored it at first, but then as it kept going on throughout the day, I kind of took more attention to it. Like, okay, well, my feet are tingling. I didn't drink too much Henny last night, but I don't know why my feet are tingling so bad. And I ended up telling my mom and some of my family. And I remember like immediately when I told my mom, she goes into mommy mode. It was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Are you fine? Are you in pain? I'm like, no, mom, I'm good. I'm just, just letting you know my feet are tingling. I don't know why. Uh, and literally, I swear to God on everything I love. She literally, in front of everybody, we were sitting down on the, on the Lido deck in the cruise. And she literally grabs my feet and starts like massaging it, just hoping to try to make it feel better. Um, but unfortunately, it wasn't. The tingling just kept persisting. Now, mind you, I wasn't in pain. I wasn't hurting, but it was just kind of weird. It was just tingling, just the tingling feeling in my my foot. I disregard it. The next day, I, I kind of drink it, forget it away. Um, and then the next day I wake up, it's like Saturday um, um, or Sunday, one of the two. And um, all of a sudden, that tingling goes from like my feet. It's now covering like not just my toes. Um, it's going from my whole foot into like my upper like shin area kind of and I'm like, whoa, this is kind of weird now the tingling started from my toes to my feet It's going up slowly, but surely like up to kind of like my shins and whatnot And you know, I let my mom know and everything like that and she kind of kind of went panic mode It was like our last day on the cruise. She was like when we get off you need to like go to the hospital like immediately um, so just to skip um that's exactly what happened. We got off the boat, um, you know, that next day, um, she flew home and I ended up going to the hospital, just the emergency room, like, Hey, just wanted to let you know that my feet are tingling. I don't know why. Um, even the doctors didn't <laughs> know why, like they like literally told me that I had to go to another hospital cause they didn't have the right people there, the right doctors or neurologists there or whatever. So I ended up going to Memorial Regional Hospital over here in Hollywood, Florida. Um, and essentially, they had to, like, keep me there for, like, the not only the day. They said, oh, we actually have to do more tests. So we're going to have to keep you here for, like, the night. So that was, like, now I'm, like, okay, shit's getting really serious. Excuse my language. I was, like, things getting really serious. Like, I've never been in an emer I've been to emergency rooms before, but I've never been in an emergency room where I had to stay overnight. So I'm, like, oh, damn, like, something serious might be happening. So, you know, and um, I'm kind of, like... I'm in my head at this time. It's like literally, I think it's like this early, sorry, late November or early December, early December, I believe. And I'm just kind of like, oh, this is kind of weird. And just all the things that's going on, I couldn't make sense of anything. I was just like, all I knew was I just need to have my eyes focused on God. I know God is going to take care of everything. I know he's not going to put anything in front of me that I can't handle, but this just got to be something going on or whatever. They're going to figure it out. They did some tests, blood work, you know, all negative. And then they did this spinal tap. A spinal tap is when they kind of like go, they put some numbing thing behind your, your spine. They, they kind of take, um, I don't know exactly, but they take some blood or, or whatever it is out of your spine, um, whatever fluid is. Um, 
just to test it out, to, to rule out anything possible. They ruled out the complete worst case scenario. I forgot what it was called, but it was something that like, if it's left untreated, you could like get completely paralyzed. And I, I like freaked out like for a second. Cause I was like, Whoa, wait a minute. Death, please God, like not me. Like, but the good news was that wasn't the case. I didn't have that, but there was still something going on. They, they didn't really know what it was, but they did say it could potentially be multiple sclerosis. And I was like, what the heck? I've never even heard of that before. Like, what is this sclerosis? The only sclerosis I heard was, you know, the scoliosis, like, you know, the thing that you get in the back, like, you know, as a kid, when you're in middle school and you get tested for it or something like that. So I just knew whatever osis was, it wasn't good. So, um, you know, in my head at the time, I was, I was calm for the most part, but in the back of my mind, I was kind of freaking out because now it's like day two in the emergency room and they said they needed to keep me longer to do like MRIs now. And I'm like, damn, like now I got to do MRIs. Great. So they do an MRI on my brain and on my back and on my spine. Um, and, you know, overall I was feeling better. They gave me steroids in the beginning. I forgot to mention that. They gave me steroids and they kept giving me steroids kind of for the next two days just to make sure, you know, I'm not the tingling kind of suppresses and, um, you know, I could just relax. Um, and then, so next thing I know, um, you know, I'm, I'm be in the meantime, while I was in the hospital, I did have like, you know, a pair of friends come visit me. I actually got to the kind of blessing here was I actually got to meet one of my aunts for the first time ever. I didn't even know she lived out here exactly where I used to live. Well, here in Hollywood, where I'm at. Um, so my dad kind of encouraged her. I told my dad that, you know, I'm in the emergency room and he encouraged her to come visit me. So she came to visit and everything like that in between. Um, and everything was fine. When everything was kind of, you know, a little bit mellowed down, they kind of did all the tests they needed to do. They kind of discharged me from the emergency room. So I went home. They told me that I had to come back. My next follow-up appointment was Christmas Eve, the 24th. Um, so the 24th comes and, you know, I'm kind of like antsy, kind of like, okay, well, what the heck is going on? I'm like, can't be muscle sclerosis. It's got to be something else. Like, you know, there's just something that probably happened. Can't be, but... In the meantime, I did say I, I did have a quick conversation with God um, for a second. Um, and I was like, yo, God, like, you know, if you really love me. You wouldn't let this happen to me. But at the same time, I was like, at the same time, God, I do understand you will never give something to your soldiers. You will never put a battle in front of your soldiers that they couldn't defeat um, or they couldn't overcome. So I kind of had positivity in my mind, like. I know God got me no matter what happens. Um, 24th comes and uh, they pull out the x-rays and everything. I mean, with the doctors and they're like, yeah, so we've concluded that you have multiple sclerosis. And I wasn't surprised, you know, um, because I was kind of hinted, hey, you might have this. But at the same time, I was surprised because I was like, bro, I really got this. This can't be like, no way. Um, but. I didn't act like that in, in the hospital. I was like, oh, like, really? Um, but I was still kind of in denial. Um, I was so in denial that I didn't even take any of the follow. Like, they said, oh, get on vitamin D because um, you're vitamin D deficient. Um, and also, you want to get your treatment started right away. Like, right away. Like, and just, and their treatment is just to, you know, help suppress your immune system to, to make it not hyperactive. Essentially, what my, multiple sclerosis is. Multiple sclerosis is literally when your immune system attacks itself. It just randomly attacks itself in different areas. So the doctor concluded that when they did the x-rays, they found lesions in my brain and in my spine, like old lesions um, in some new ones that may have just arrived. And essentially, they said that kind of concludes in, you know, the, the, the blood work that we've done and, and your symptoms. It kind of makes sense that you indeed have multiple sclerosis. I was in so denial that like I like put it off. I put it in the back burner. Um, but then the, the tingling kind of ended up moving literally from my feet eventually over time to like my fingers. And I'm like, oh, God. You ain't playing. I guess I do have this thing, man. But I don't know. I'm still denying. I was like, it can't be. It's got to be something. I literally went for a second opinion. I went to the University of Miami Health and I got a second opinion. 
skip all that long story there. They ended up concluding, yeah, bro, you got multiple sclerosis. And I'm like, damn, okay, I got this. God, you ain't playing. I really do got this. But since I have faith in God, I wasn't like too down. I just, I was just a little down because I was like, how could this happen to me? No one ever thinks something, you know, crazy or serious condition is going to happen to you until it happens. Um, so essentially, you know, I, I, I acted quickly. I contacted the original hospital and I said, hey, I just want to get started on this uh, treatment. And um, yeah, they got me started. I ended up going to Infusion Center and they did my first infusion treatment. They let me know I'm going to be on this drug called Ocrevus. Ocrevus is a drug. You may have seen the commercials or anything. It's like a drug that you get infused um, an injection. It's an IV infusion that you have to literally be sitting down with this IV um, treatment going into your bloodstream for a whole three hours. And this must be done two times a year um, for three hours. So um, I did my first treatment. I forgot exactly when the date uh, was, but when I did my first treatment, um, I kind of accepted the fact that, hey, you have this. But at the same time, I was like, I'm not going to rest on the negatives. Like, you know, you have two options when when things happen to, you You know, you can react negatively to it or you can obviously react positive to it. Now, if you act negative, only negative things are going to come about. Only negative thoughts are going to come about. It's not even good for your health to have negative thoughts. I create stress and all that stuff. So um, I just try to maintain a positive outlook. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this opportunity as an opportunity to not only strengthen myself that I am bigger than this MS, um, my faith is bigger than this MS, and my God is bigger than this MS, that it's not going to define me. I'm going to define it. Um, I'm, so essentially with MS, um, I have to take my treatments uh, two times a year. Um, they say that health is like your number one bread and butter. You got to stay active in the gym um, and whatnot, or maintain some sort of um, exercise. And, and I have to maintain and watch my diet. Um, I have to change my diet completely and kind of do more, I guess, keto friendly food that, that would help me, which sucks because I ain't going to eat that stuff. Maybe I'll eat it later on, you know, but um, I have been trying to that's actually been one of the more difficult parts is trying to uh, change my diet um, overall but living with ms every day um i try not to think about it um i mean right now as i speak with you right now and this has been happening ever since i have the tingly feeling in my fingers i can't help it but it's just there um but it, no pain, no nothing. It doesn't prevent me from doing any work or anything like that. Um, there was this one time where I had an emergency. I kind of had a panic attack where like the tingling was so crazy at work one time when I was working at Top Golf on my feet. Like I couldn't. St it's like I could stand, but when I stood, it was like I was literally almost like kind of walking on glass in a way, like literally. like, And it was weird. I can't even explain it because it wasn't like every step I took, it was like, ah, I'm in pain. It was like just uncomfortable to step, like literally. So, um, and I was afraid at one point. I was like, damn, am I going to have this for like life? Yo, like where every step is going to be a problem. But um, essentially MS, I guess when uh, this is called, when things happen to you like that, the tingling, you know, anything like that, um, it's called an episode, um, you know, when things happen. And it can range from a wide variety of things. I've met so many people that have a mess and God bless their soul. I've met some people that said when they've woken up, they couldn't even get up their bed. Like their legs weren't even working. I know some people that are walking with a cane, like literally because their legs are a little bit unstable. I know there's some people I've met that they are partially blind. Um, they could see, but they're kind of like, you know, they just have uh, trouble with um, their vision. Um, so fortunately, you know, I think that I'm one of the lucky ones. I kind of caught it very young at my young age. I think I caught it at the age of 28. Um, I'm 31 now. Um, and some people, unfortunately, they don't catch this condition or at least they don't get it checked until later on, which a little bit too late, like where it's kind of like, eh, you're going to kind of need a, a walker right now or a cane. As I said, some people I've met that have to use a cane um, or a walker and 
or just need assistance. Um, so the way I cope with this, um, you know, I try not to think about it, but even when I do think about it, it's one of those things that I'm like, okay, well, you're not affecting me. I'm still going to work. I'm still going to work out, even though I have this tingling feeling in my hand, I'm still going to participate in that activity because I want to be the ambassador for MS and prove that, Hey, no matter what you could still achieve, whatever you want, no matter what the condition it does not define you. You define it. So, um, yeah, so uh, it's funny. I almost um, I need to take my vitamin D today. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that's something I have to do every day. I have to take vitamin D every single day just to make sure my levels are up. I'm from up north in Boston, where if you're from up north, you already know when the wintertime comes, you're in kind of pure darkness all the time. But thank God I'm down here in Florida where, you know, you get vitamin D often well, with the sun. So it kind of helps me there. Um, so, yeah, everyone, um, MS, it's a battle. The good thing about MS, it's not fatal. You know, it's not like I'm going to die, um, you know, if I miss a dosage or anything like that. Um, it's just one of those things that. The bad thing, I guess, about it is they say reduce life expectancy of five to 10 years, whatever. But it doesn't bother me because, again, I believe in something higher than that. Um, and, yeah, folks, I just if there is something to take away from this message, um, I truly believe this, that you at the end of the day, you call the shots. With whatever condition you have and, and you know, God bless your soul with any dis, uh, condition you may be facing or family or friends that might be facing a condition. But the best thing that you can do is be there to support them. Be there to show that you care. Check in with them. Check in on their health. Hey, how are you doing? Um, you know, I have many friends and family members and some of them check up on me um, and everything like that. But. I bet a lot of them don't even know that I experience this tingling every single day. Um, there's cognitive things that happens with MS as well, um, ranging from memory loss, um, frustration, um, a whole wide variety. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but um, it does affect cog cognitive function um, as well. Um, but thank God mine has kind of still been intact. But I know sometimes I've definitely been hit with depression. I've definitely had my frustration and anger moments. Um, but at the end of the day, what can I do? You know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be hostile, though, uh, to, you know, towards people or anything just because I'm like this or pity me because I'm this way. So treat me this way um, more so just spread love. Um, you know, all I try to do is spread love with my condition that I have and all I want that would help my condition is love back. Um, you know, I there's no cure. So but I do believe in the power of love and I know love definitely uplifts spirits um, and everybody needs it, um, including myself. So. Um, so, yeah, everyone, I hope if you took anything from this, it's just. Remain strong with whatever battle that you're experiencing. If you have a friend or family member, stay strong for them. Um, be there. Be on their corner. Understand it's a it's a battle almost every day. Um, an unseen battle um, that people just don't realize might be going on in your life. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time.